cannabis common sense, the show that tells the truth about marijuana and the politics behind its prohibition. Hello and welcome to another exciting edition of Cannabis Common Sense. Our show is a production of our nonprofit organization, the Hemp and Cannabis Foundation, or THCF, and our affiliated political committee, the Campaign for the Restoration and Regulation of Hemp, or CRRH. We have an exciting show for you tonight. Bingy and the Seventh Seal are here to provide some reggae tunes. They'll be on in just a moment with a few of their songs. Hi, Bingy. Greetings, greetings, greetings. Welcome to the show. We have uh, Mr. Tim Payton and Mr. Russ Balville here on the set. We'll be taking your phone calls and comments and questions here shortly. Uh, we'll have some film clips and some more fun, so stay tuned as you watch one of the oldest shows about ending adult marijuana prohibition, restoring industrial hemp, and helping medical marijuana patients in the world. Cannabis Common Sense. And we'll buy a few crucial seconds as we bring on our infamous dancing cannabis leaves. I feel the force. Bingy and the Seventh Seal, a perennial favorite from our Hempstock Festival. Welcome back, Bingy. God bless. God bless. God bless. Last so far. Right. Yeah.
say, I say, listen to me again. If we was bad, God would be bad. Say that I love you higher. He give me the trees, but that I see. And that Thank you, Biggie. Creation. 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 Yeah, no bother right no there. Give love to each and everyone, you know, for the smoke yeah. of the weed, because what? Because the weed of the healing of the nation. The nation. Everything, Everything you look, you see it. King, King Solomon. Go on. Go on. Go on. Thank, Thank you for having us here. Yeah. We'll have Bingy back here a little bit later toward the end of the show. Thank you, Bingy. That's a great song. And thank you, band, Seven Seal. Welcome, uh, Tim and Russ, right Tim going? Pate, Russ Belleville. Good to be back. Yeah, you've been traveling all over the place lately, haven't you? I've been on uh, what I call the Radical Russ Puff Puff Pass Tour. Yeah, Puff Puff we went to, uh, went to the, the transcontinental uh, uh, party. That's right. Right after the, uh, we did Portland Hempstock, and then after Hempstock, the next week was Boston Freedom Rally. Yes. Week, weekend after that was uh, the normal conference in San Francisco. The weekend after that was the Great Midwest Harvest Fest in Madison, Wisconsin. And then just this uh, last couple of days, I was in Orlando, Florida at the University of Central Florida. So quite busy. Two, three. I was Boston. You crossed the country oh. six times there, huh? Yes, just Back about. Back and forth. Yeah, I've been in every time zone but mountain. 
Uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, Boston was uh, fantastic. The, the, the Freedom Rally this year was, uh, was quite the thing because uh, this year they got decriminalization in Massachusetts, of course, uh, and that made a big difference with all those people gathered out in the, in the Boston Common. Probably about 30, They weren't facing 000. a felony or a misdemeanor in yeah. jail time. It was just an infraction. Yeah, it was quite funny. Uh, uh, Keith Strop and Rick Cusick just two years ago got arrested for smoking a joint on the Common, right. and this year they did so without the threat of arrest, so it was That's a beautiful great. thing. So it's more like Seattle now. More like Seattle. Not as big. Well, you know, Seattle, it's, it's not an infraction anymore. I mean, it's, it's a, a misdemeanor for under 40 grams with a mandatory 24 hours in jail. Yeah. So uh, it's not such a simple thing in Washington State if you're arrested. Of course, Oregon was the first state to decriminalize back in 73, but we're fortunate with that. We are taking your phone calls tonight. If you have a question or a comment for us, call us at 503 Two eight eight forty four forty eight, and we have a call who's been standing by. Hello, caller. You're on the show. Hi, you guys. Thanks for taking my call. Sure, welcome. I have a simple question about um, insomnia. Currently, I'm disabled, and the government is spending. Social Security is paying over one and a half thousand dollars a month to to keep me where I'm at and to give me medication. And none of the insomnia treatments, including sleep apnea, have really worked. But in the past, when I used medical cannabis. I only slept for seven hours a night. I, I, I woke up at 8 in the morning, went to sleep at 10 or 11 at night. But on the medications they've given me, it makes, makes me gain body fat. I have a slow heart rate. I'm, I'm dizzy all the time. So that kind of explains it. So can you tell me how medical cannabis can help me with insomnia? Well, you know, medical cannabis definitely can help a lot of folks sleep. Uh, the after effects, once you're kind of coming down, is, is to be a little bit sleepy. But... Mm -hmm. uh, you know, that in and of itself is not a qualifying condition yeah. in uh, the state of Oregon and most other states. I think it would qualify with some doctors in California, mm -hmm. but not in Oregon. All right. And what about uh, if we look at the differences in, in uh, different strains of marijuana between sativas or indicas, would one or the other be better for someone with insomnia? You know, generally indicas are yeah. going to be more likely to put someone to sleep, where sativa is more of a... Uh, an awake, uh, uh, hyper sort of uh, uh, psychoactive effect. Yeah. You know, this, this caller uh, reminds me of something that really frustrates me so much about our modern pharmaceutical-based medicines is that they give you a, a handful of pills to deal with, ev with whatever ails you and then and another handful another of pills pill. to take care of the side effects from the pills. <laughs> it's just right. terrible. Well, that's where cannabis is so useful. It's helpful for so many different conditions that... Uh, we find patients who it, it helps, uh, you know, migraines are another one of the ones that uh, I have a lot of uh, antique bottles like this one here that have held cannabis, and, and several of them are migraine medicines, and sometimes that's associated with insomnia. Mm -hmm. So I hope that helped you. It helps a lot. So thanks a lot, and keep up the good work. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. If you have a question for us, I call that number there on your screen. It's 503 288 448. That's 503 288 4448. So basically, what that last caller was saying that was that nothing else works but cannabis. Right. Everything else was just, you know, but well, cannabis. Well, it's causing works. a lot of problems. Yeah. Uh, Weight gain. Yeah, which that's what I mean. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So that's the fact with so many. You know, you, you hear these ads for pharmaceuticals, and it reminds me of Dr. Todd Micaria yeah. saying, you know, that it's a monomolecular madness or something <laughs> uh, in like terms God. of just yeah. you, they are trying to find the perfect molecule where cannabis has the assortment of cannabinoids that seem to act synergistically yes. to uh, uh, balance so many different functions and everything and, you know, increase longevity. Including in just the right amount of them. Put you right to sleep. That's right. That's right. Which is a good thing if you're insomnia. That's true. So, uh, we have another caller. Hello, caller. You're on the show. Hello. Hello. Howdy. Hello. I'm 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 about in the process of uh, flowering, and my uh -huh. question had to do with the lightage. And uh, do I turn my lights down every other night, an hour, or no. every night an no, hour? No. You can just jump. You don't have to. You know. Uh, just right, cut them right. down that you know a little bit every night. You yeah. can just go straight from an 18-hour cycle to a 12-hour cycle, and once you get below 13 hours, then flowering's induced. Oh, well, I've been doing 12 hours on and 12 hours off the whole time. Yeah, well, that will make them flower. 
Okay. And so if you want them to vegetate, and that is grow without flowering, then you'd want to have, uh, you know, an 18-hour light cycle, 18 to 24 hours. Oh, okay, more light. Yeah, exactly, and that's going to make them grow bigger. And then when you're ready to uh, flower them, generally when your plants reach uh, where you don't want them to grow more than about another foot and a half or two feet, then uh, uh, you want to cut your lights back. You want to leave them on an 18-hour light cycle until uh, you, you, you reach that size requirement and it all depends on your grow space and uh, uh, other factors and how much you want to produce. The longer you vegetate a plant, the bigger it gets as long as it has uh, uh, maximum nutrients and, and uh, air and light then it will produce uh, more marijuana the bigger it gets in the vegetative cycle. And so uh, it's going to get bigger during that 18 hour light cycle and then when you're ready to flower it takes about uh, anywhere from 50 to 70 days depending on the strain to complete that flower cycle and so once you put it change it from 18 to uh, 12 hours of light on a daily basis 12 hours on 12 hours off and the other conversely is 18 hours on and six hours off once you reduce it to 12 12 then about 60 days later you're ready to harvest wonderful and I don't have to have, when I'm ready to harvest I don't have to worry about the light I mean, it doesn't have to be dark all night. No. You know, uh, there's some studies out there that show that uh, the, your trichromes or the resin glands on the flowers swell up and are two or three times bigger in the middle of the night. So because of that, I recommend harvesting, and I always harvest in, in the night cycle. Oh, wonderful. Uh, I have one more question. I had an outside plant that we just brought in, and we're just about ready to harvest with our others, and it had a couple seeds in it. Mm -hmm. Do I have to be concerned with my clones that I've just cloned some that I'm I've already Well, you know, cloned. as long as it's not heavily, uh, in, you know, you don't have a lot of seeds, then uh, a couple little seeds probably don't matter. And if it was outdoors, it could have come from uh, pollen in the air or yeah. it could come from uh, male flowers on the, the buds themselves. But if it's not heavily seeded, you should be fine. Oh, wonderful. Thank you very much. You're I really welcome. appreciate it. Good luck with everything. <laughs> Thank you very much. If you're out there and you think you might qualify for uh, medical marijuana, then, you know, we can help you. Just give us a call. We have doctors and, and staff standing by ready to help people with qualifying conditions. Get a medical marijuana permit. Just call us at 1-800-723-0188. That's 1-800-723-0188. If you're in the Portland area, you can call us at 503 235 Four six zero six. That's five zero three two three five four six zero six. And we have doctors all across the U.S. of A. waiting to help you. We're happy now, to say. With that last uh, caller, is there any issue with you know he started doing twelve twelve and has been doing twelve twelve for a while? Is there any issue with switching in the middle like that to going to eighteen? Well, yeah, there is. Uh, the plants release hormones based on the amount of light they receive. Mm -hmm. You know, people are the same way, but we don't really notice it quite as much. But uh, depending on the type of light you receive in your eyes, your endocrine system keys certain uh, biological processes. But with plants, it's a lot easier to measure. Uh, once the light cycle drops down to 13 hours or less, they start uh, their hormone cell and flower. Fall is coming. Mm -hmm. And so if it's been in a 12-hour uh, cycle, you know, it's a lot like the plants in Hawaii. In Hawaii, the the days don't vary more than two or three hours each way. You know, it, right. you have maybe uh, ten and a half hours of daylight in the winter and thirteen and a half hours of daylight in the summer. Where the farther you get away from the equator, the greater that difference is. Oh. So in Hawaii, you can harvest uh, flowered crops throughout the the year and only have a really short period to vegetate because once it drops down below 13 hours of daylight then uh, they'll start flowering. So, so if he's been doing 12 all this time should he not switch to 18 at this point? If he switches to 18 the plants are going to take about a month mm -hmm. to six weeks mm -hmm. to start coming back and fully go into the vegetative cycle. What you'll see is the flowers will start to elongate and pretty soon they'll start shooting out these little single leaf uh, structures that will soon turn into three leaves and then five and seven as the plants get bigger and, and fully come back from the flower cycle into uh, the bud cycle. That's interesting. 
Yeah. We're always trying to help. I think we have a person in the audience. Hello. Hi. How are um, you? I just wanted to know, Paul, could you tell us about side effects on medications that you have to take for an illness like insomnia, how that might help a patient qualify in their state? Yeah, that's true. Like a lot of headaches, times that if can you be with don't medication. qualify for your condition uh, and you're taking medications for things like insomnia or depression, the side effects of those uh, medications can qualify you for medical marijuana. And that's clearly stated in all the state's medical marijuana laws that specify conditions that uh, if your treatment causes spasms, pain, nausea, uh, things like that, then you can qualify for medical marijuana based on those conditions. Good point. So if you're out there and you have a question for us tonight, give us a call at 800. No, oh, that's uh, 503. <laughs> Uh, 288 4448. And we have another caller. Hello, caller. You're on the show. Hello, yeah. I had a question about um, hyperactivity disorders or attention deficit disorders, uh -huh. uh, those type of psychological disorders. Is there any uh, proven proof that the medical marijuana has helped out cases like that? Yes, there is. There's uh, a book out there, I think it's called Jeffrey's Story, mm -hmm. that talks about an ADHD family that found relief using medical marijuana and uh, in California a number of uh, uh, people with ADHD and uh, hyperactive disorders are able to use medical marijuana however California is the only state where that's allowed currently for oh, those really? conditions yeah California's okay. law which was the first one that was written did not outline a series of conditions it simply said doctors can recommend medical marijuana for anything they think it might help with where all the other states that have medical laws, they outline a series of conditions, and if your condition's in, you can get a permit. If it's not, then uh, you can't. And there are mechanisms here in Oregon and Washington and, and the other medical marijuana states by which they can add conditions. Currently, uh, an attorney and a nurse, uh, uh, Ed Glick being the nurse and Lee Berger being the attorney, have been pushing the state to... Uh, add other conditions to the medical marijuana list here in Oregon. To date, the only one that's been added is uh, Alzheimer's syndrome. Right. Not one I want to forget. It's a very slow Alzheimer's. process. Yeah. It, you know, and it's not, oh, I, I okay. wouldn't call it a progressive process yet. No. In Washington, they added uh, hepatitis and one or two other conditions. Uh, but, uh, yeah, it's a very difficult process. If you get doctors to participate in it, then you've got to petition the health department health department then has a series of hearings and then their uh, chief medical officer and administrators make the decision. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, I'm just like you guys were talking about earlier about the whole pill thing. I'm just not down with that. I've had a couple accidents in my life where pills have been involved and I'm, I totally avoid mm. taking pills. I don't even like taking, you know, ibuprofen for headaches. <laughs> yeah, sure. So, well, you okay. know, a lot of people I can think of, uh, who was the wide receiver for the Seattle Seahawks who took so many Tylenols he killed his kidneys? It was, yeah. uh, I forget his name right off yeah, the bat. Yeah, I can't remember either. But, yeah, I think I heard something about that just recently too, yeah. Yeah. But, was, yeah, anyway, yeah, that's the case. So I, I do appreciate the help and the uh, information, and uh, thanks for being out there, guys. Hey, we're glad to do it. Thanks for your call. I spoke to a, a lot of the uh, college students down at University of Central Florida just this week, just Wednesday, Tuesday and Wednesday, uh, at least three of them that were ADHD, uh, and they all told me horror stories of being on Adderall or being on, uh, uh, what's the other one that they give you for ADHD there? Uh, I forget it. But, uh, yeah, the, 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 they're on these, these basic you know, pharmaceutical speed is what they are, and uh, the terrible side effects they get from them, you know, including things like uh, you know, constipation, sleeplessness, uh, uh, you know, all sorts of terrible nausea that they get. And to, to, to think that we're restricting them from trying a non-toxic herb is just ridiculous. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, we are uh, pushing a new petition campaign out there, the uh, OCTA petition uh, for Oregon that would legalize the sale of marijuana and allow any doctor to recommend medical marijuana for any condition they think it's useful for. So uh, if you want to find out more about that, you can go to octa2010.org. That's octa2010.org.
We have another caller. Hello, caller. You're on the show. Hello. Hello. Howdy. Can you hear me? Yes. yes we can, can hear you. Oh, okie doke. I was going to ask if there's another cardholder meeting where people can meet and Tomorrow. exchange clones. Yeah, Good as a question. fact, there is. Uh, Oregon Normal's uh, cardholder meeting will be held tomorrow at 700 Northeast Deacom. Uh, the doors open at 11, and they close promptly at noon. You do need to be a registered patient or caregiver or grower in the Oregon Medical Marijuana Program. You need to bring your Oregon State ID. Can't accept people from Washington, unfortunately, because we've got to follow the Oregon law uh, to the T. And uh, need to be a member of Oregon Normal. And if you're not, there's ways of joining at the door. So, yes, there will be a cardholder meeting tomorrow. They're always on the second Saturday and the fourth Saturday of every month. And for more information, just check out Oregon Normal's website at ornorml.org. Okay, thank you. And really quick, I just checked in. Have you heard any news about Jack Herrer lately? Yes. Um, yes. Tim's yes. been most closely involved with that. So. Yes, I have. If you'd like an update, I'd be happy to give you Please. one. Please. Uh, I've got the opportunity to spend a good amount of time with Jack uh, and his family over the last few weeks in the hospital. Uh, today, Jack was... Uh, Today, Jack was uh, released from uh, uh, Legacy Emanuel Hospital and moved to a uh, private nursing home in uh, the Eugene area. And so uh, his, uh, his continued, uh, he surprises us. He, he's just continued to surprise us each, each time I, I walk into the hospital room. Uh, but uh, understand Jack has got a long, arduous road ahead of him. So uh, he is in stable condition, and he's been moved to a nursing home, so he was stable enough to be moved. And uh, he was taken off the ventilator two weeks ago, and he's been breathing on his own for two weeks. Uh, they've gotten the pneumonia uh, seemingly under control, and, and other issues are, are uh, we just remain hopeful. He's still you know, after us. Jack's heart attack, uh, we had to give him CPR for almost 40 minutes before an well, ambulance showed up. it keeps getting up. longer, but uh, yeah. it was... Well, it was more than 30. And you know, uh, uh, Everyone it agrees on that. It was way too long, and so was there was some long. damage to his heart during the resuscitation process and, and damage to his brain from lack of oxygen. So he was in a deep coma for a while, and then you were playing guitar when he first came out of that. You've been doing uh, this music therapy with him for almost daily since He was then. in an induced coma for a couple of weeks, right? Uh, and, uh, and that was to, to try and uh, alleviate... You know, some brain of the issues, swelling. Yeah, they found some, that some that of the issues with stops the swelling, and uh, brain and they swelling. had brought him out of that that induced coma, and uh, he'd woken up apparently the night before with one of the nurses. But uh, uh, yeah, I, after five days of playing guitar with him, uh, yeah, he did actually he was awake and looking at me, and I know that because I was there. So mm -hmm. it was a it was a very encouraging sign, and and I, you know he's like I said each day's little miracles come along, so we're all hopeful and uh, we'll remain so. And we also, uh, you know, want to give our best wishes to the family uh, out there. And if you want to help, you can donate uh, to the Jack Herrer Fund. I believe it's at any U.S. bank, if I'm not mistaken. Is yes, that? U.S. bank. All right. So we have a, uh, thanks for that call. We have a film clip that we're going to run now from, uh, well, just imagine that, the Emperor of Hemp about Jack Herrer himself. So. Uh, uh, let's go ahead and see this film clip. We'll be back in just a minute. It's a crisp spring morning in Manhattan. A perfect day for a march down Broadway. But on this day, for this crowd, the Big Apple isn't exactly rolling out the red carpet. There are delays and confusion about where to gather. Mayor Rudy Giuliani waits until the very last minute to issue the necessary permit. But several thousand show up anyway, and eventually this ragtag army begins the long trek to Battery Park. The marchers have all come together this day for various reasons, but with one common voice. 
to protest the United States policies on marijuana. The marchers are cordially escorted by a phalanx of New York's finest. Or so it seems. Business as usual in America's war on drugs. They're not gonna get rid of us that easy. For the last 30 years, a hardcore band of activists has been fighting the war on marijuana in what they see as a struggle for truth and justice. One man among them stands apart. He has been described as a cult folk hero, a boisterous rabble-rouser, a crazy man. His name is often mispronounced. He likes to say it rhymes with terror. But one thing is certain. Because of him, we enter the next millennium with a new knowledge of an ancient plant. A plant whose present-day revival was sparked by this man's 1985 best-selling book. The book revealed the lost history of the hemp plant, and in doing so, lit a fire under a legion of followers the world over. Its title is, The Emperor Wears No Clothes. Its author is known as the father of today's burgeoning hemp movement. His name is Jack Herrer. of age, Jack Herrer has been stumping for hemp nearly half his life. It's been a long, strange, and decidedly uphill journey. But he trudges onward despite ill health somehow turning on the passion when the curtain goes up. These outlawed the natural, and I say we've got to take it back by standing together. Make it legal million man. Make it legal million man march next year. Make it two million. Come to New York next year. Mayday. There was a time, not too many years ago, that Jack Herrer's ideas about hemp were deemed irrational, extreme, off the wall. But today, those harsh judgments seem like a distant memory. Jack Herrer's great genius was in introducing a broader vision of the economic value of the hemp plant. I didn't know anything about hemp or the fact that there was a movement until Jack sat me down one night he is what you might call a force of nature. I've met several people in my lifetime who I would judge as having such fiery intensity within them that approve of them or disapprove of them, you have to acknowledge that they are forces of nature. I saw Jack as a Michigan, a crazy man. And um, particularly when it came to this whole idea that hemp was going to somehow re revolutionize the world and revolutionize the marijuana reform movement. And so, uh, Michigan is the right word for Jack. Jack Herrer was an unlikely candidate for Emperor of Hemp. He was born into a conservative middle class... And we're back. All right. So that's uh, <coughs> an excerpt from... The Emperor of Hemp, this wonderful little uh, video that was financed by Anita Roderick, who recently passed away, uh, with The Body Shop, the lady who uh, started all those stores, first in England, now all over the world. She uh, came forward with some dollars, and they got Peter Wolf to narrate it, and uh, it's uh, been played on PBS across country. It's done pretty well, kind of like Jack's book. It's That's been right. out there in 
sold uh, over a million copies in, in several Coyote different languages. Was narrating that. Hmm? Peter Coyote. Oh, Coyote, yeah. Wolf, right. Wolf Coyote, Coyote, Fox, whatever. One of those <laughs> canine type creatures, that's it's right. A little smaller. Yeah, yeah. right. A little yeah. more prevalent. All right. yeah, very much. We have a uh, call that's been standing by, though. Hello, caller, you're on the show. Oh, and they, they're not standing they weren't by that long patient. enough. They weren't patient <laughs> that's enough. All right. So now is your time. If you want to call us at 503-288-4448, you might get through if you're quick. Yeah. You know, you were speaking earlier about the how the medical marijuana states have lists of conditions that one has to uh, be approved for. Uh, before I came here to the show, I was working on a piece uh, debunking uh, the California Narcotics Officers Association and the California Police Chiefs Association are up in arms because we're all talking about legalization and the polls are out. Fifty six percent of the Californians want legalization. So they feel compelled to try to scare to protect us. their jobs that's got to protect their jobs and it's just amazing we want to keep putting you guys in jail come on <laughs> it's that's amazing it. some of the things they try to get get away with saying and right on the, off the top of the bat on this uh on, on this position paper they claim that only two percent of the californians using medical marijuana are using it for serious legitimate medical conditions oh wow that's and so you, we look for the citation wow. or the statistic on that. It's yeah, just one they pulled out of their department uh, right out of their ass. Right? Yes, where did exactly. they pull that? Yeah. yeah. My yeah. word. It's ridiculous to think that 49 out of 50 Californians are faking it. Come no, on. That's, that's, they tried that to do the crazy. same thing here in Oregon, and, and you, were, we, you were able to quickly debunk mm -hmm. that. I mean, it, obviously, you know, they're just not paying attention. Well, they want to they try to make people think that when Prop 215 and all the other medical marijuana laws were first proposed, that somehow they were only proposed for AIDS, cancer, and glaucoma. Right. And so they look at those and they'll say, well, only 2% are using it for AIDS, cancer, and glaucoma, so that's only the serious ones. They don't take into account, you know, people with degenerative disc disease or epilepsy or irritable bowel. And it just makes me so angry mm. when they say, well, look at all these healthy people going into the medical marijuana clinics. Right. Did you ever stop to think maybe they're healthy? because they're using medical marijuana? Right. It's and what does someone with epilepsy pain. look like anyway? Yeah, chronic pain is difficult to, to judge and That's exactly by, right. by just looking at someone sometime. Yeah. So we have another caller on the air. Hello, caller. You're on our show. Uh, I have two questions. One, uh, are yellow leaves that die on the plant, uh, are they useful for anything? Yes. They are useful to provide nutrients to the plant. What happens is the plant will take nutrients out of those, the mobile nutrients like nitrogen and phosphorus, and move those to the flower sites and oh. use them to build flowers. So, so as long as they're the yellow, yellow the plant can still pull nutrients out of it. Once it turns brown and starts to get dried out, then you can remove it. You want to take it off because it might induce mold or mildew. Okay, but those are not useful for anything. No, no, okay. not for any not for kind of medicinal use, no. <laughs> They're only useful for the plant itself yeah. to take as a nutrient source. And it'll do that if it's uh, low in nitrogen or just sometimes at the very end of the flower cycle. The plant will start pulling all the nutrients it can yeah. to, to make more flowers. Okay. The other question is, um, how do you, what's a glycerin extract? How does that work? How do you make well, that? Well, it's the same as if you have an oil or an alcohol extract. It's just another medium that uh, uh, cannabis oils are, so are dissolve in. What kind of, where do you get that? What kind of glycerin are, you, are we talking about? Glycerin is uh, a, a biological byproduct of uh, uh, plant oils. It can be distilled out of plant oils, and it's uh, used in all sorts of different uh, body care products, mouthwash, toothpaste. It has kind of a sweet flavor, so when you make a glycerin extract as opposed to say an alcohol extract the glycerin extract is going to have a a sweet flavor where the alcohol extract is going to have kind of the depending on the level of alcohol in it kind of a burning yeah. or more of a astringent flavor mm -hmm. and so an oil extract won't have either one of those properties and so each of those oil butter is one glycerin is another and alcohol is a, a third each of them are, are fine uh, uh, mediums which with which to extract cannabis because the they are oil solvents and they will dissolve the the plant oils and resins. And is is one better than the other? Uh, what I do what I do is uh, extract um, you know uh, pulverize the leaves and uh, soak them in uh, Everclear for some time and shake yeah. it a lot and then. Um, 
uh, strain that and put that in um, pancake mix. Uh, well, wait a minute. First, I, yeah, then I let that dry out, completely dry out, and then I make pancakes with it just as normal. Uh-huh. Yeah, that's a good way to extract it, and, and pancakes sound pretty tasty to me. Try it with blueberry muffins. <laughs> I like it with blueberry muffins myself. <laughs> kind of complements the flavor. Yeah. Now, it, it, would, would there be any... Yeah. That's would there true. be any advantage to using uh, glycerin? And, I well, mean, yeah, and you want to be sure, as, as Tim mentioned, Sylvia here on camera, too, brought up uh, that you want to get a food-grade food glycerin uh, product. Where uh, do you get that? Uh, you can order it online or... Restaurant uh, supply. Hmm? Restaurant supply. Restaurant supply stores. There oh. you have it. Oh. And uh, uh, sometimes you can get it in pharmacies and things. Okay. Yeah, but if you go online, you can find places that will just ship it right to you or uh, call around. You'll find places here in town to get it. Now, the way I've been using it, um, alcohol is just as good as anything, right? Yeah, uh -huh, alcohol is. And if you're letting the alcohol evaporate off, then uh, obviously you're not going to have the, the – well, if you had a, a Everclear extract, that's yeah. going to burn. I've made Everclear extracts quite a bit myself, uh -huh. and so uh, you're going to uh, get rid of that if you yeah. evaporate the alcohol off. Mm -hmm. So yeah, any of those will work, and it all depends on uh, which method works best for you. A lot of people like oil extracts. The Rick Simpson oil has been shown to uh, by a lot of people to anecdotally uh, reverse uh, cancer tumors and and things like that. And what I know Jack Herrer, for instance, has been using it in his recovery over the past decade. What kind of oil? Uh, well, there's a, a fellow up in Nova Scotia, Canada, named Rick Simpson, who was a four-stage cancer patient. Uh -huh. He started making a high, uh, con a high THC content oil that's uh -huh. come to be known as Rick Simpson oil. Huh. And that oil has, uh, if you go out to the internet, and you, this for any cancer patient out there, anyone who knows about a cancer patient in your family. Go do a web search on Rick Simpson oil. Okay. And try to, we, they've shown that fourth and fifth stage cancer patients are able, in some cases, to completely cure themselves using this oil, using high doses of uh, uh, pure cannabis extract oil. Oh, very interesting. Well, thank yeah, you. There's, there are recent studies out, actually, that show that marijuana smokers are 70% less likely to get throat, neck, and... Uh, uh, mouth tumors, and that's a very statistically high number, 70% less yeah. likely. So if you use marijuana, the odds are you're 70% less likely to get all these different forms of cancer. So uh, sounds like a safe bet to me. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, just uh, we had several studies come out just in the past two weeks that talked about that and how some of the non-psychotropic substances in cannabis, cannabidiol, some of the terpenes, also have a lot of medicinal benefits as yeah. well. It's, it's amazing that. when you look at this research. They, they show in in vivo and in vitro that uh, application of, of THC is the magic bullet they're looking for in cancer in that it kills the cancer cells and leaves the healthy cells around it alone. It selectively kills cancer cells. And we've known this since 74? That's when the first studies <laughs> started to come out and they were suppressed and uh, only recently have they started to replicate that in large numbers. How much so. farther along would we be without this stupid prohibition? Yeah, all the major pharmaceutical so companies true. are trying to enforce, you know, their uh, to create new patents on some of the compounds in cannabis. And the United States government uh, patented the Health and Human Services Division patented uh, cannabidiol CBD for pain relief and. Uh, tumor reduction and for fighting cancer and so the fact that the federal government patented it means it's in the the public sphere and therefore uh, the pharmaceutical companies can't try to to make it a proprietary extract just for that we have another caller hello caller you're on the show hello 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 hi how are you guys doing good very well how are you pretty good uh, I just wanted to call I um, I just got back from a trip I'm um, going to Canada and I drove my car, and I had my OMMP um, paperwork in my glove box. Uh huh. And I had no idea that the Canadians would search my car, open up my glove box, and look through my paperwork. And so they found it, 
and came out and pretty much gave me hell and uh, questioned me and searched my car and uh, uh, brought all the drug dogs all over it. But they didn't find anything, but uh, I just wanted to let the viewers know, to if you're going to Canada, don't bring your paperwork. Yeah, Good exactly. <laughs> that sounds uh, terrible. I'm glad you made it through it, though. And How long did they hold you all together for this? Uh, it was about an hour and a half. Bummer. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Did they let you pass? They let me pass, let me go in. They just had so many questions. Yeah. They, it sounded like they were more curious about the program. Than yeah. anything. Well, the and, thing uh, is, if you're a Canadian and you have medical marijuana permits, they're not going to even let you into the United States. Oh, so really? So they try, they, they've increased their scrutiny because that's what we do to them, and so they're going to do it back to us a little uh, bit. So. Well, um, they were telling me, I, I asked them if it was, um, if it had ever happened to them before. Uh huh. And they're like, I was the third person that day to be detained oh, over really? finding paperwork in the car. Wow. Oh, wow. So, so they're looking for the, that paperwork, it seems. Yeah, they're looking for it. Yeah, I wonder if uh, the other people were as fortunate as you and didn't didn't have any problem with them. I hope not. I think but, they'd uh, just be turned I, away at the border. But I had uh, a question about uh, Rick Simpson. Because um, I, I remember reading something about it, and he was going to jail because in is there no... Uh, medical program in Nova Scotia? Or? No, there is. There is. I don't think he's in jail. I'm not sure what his legal troubles were. I can't really say I have any knowledge of that. Actually, but he's, he's in Europe right now. So. Oh, he is? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, I was just curious. So he's hey. alive and well and, and talking about making curing cancer mm -hmm. with uh, cannabis extracts. Do you know anybody personally that has, that's actually worked for them? Um... I know a lot of people who have used it, and they aren't dead. So uh, <laughs> in no, terms of having cancer, story. I am currently working with a number of cancer patients, and they're not dead yet either. So even fourth and fifth stage cancer patients. And, and you're using cannabis his, is non -toxic, his oil? Try. Right. Say that again. And you're using the oil that he yeah, recommends? Yeah, uh-huh, uh-huh. And cannabis pills and other sorts of extracts. Oh, interesting. Yeah, we make uh, pills out of the flowers and the leaf. For patients who don't want the high associated, we make it just out of the leaf, and if you like the high, you can make it out of the flowers. Is when you make that um, the oil, like he he's tells you how to do it, um, is it really intense? Is it like it can be? It can, it can be. be. It's a lot more like a psychedelic drug if you take a big, big dose. That, but it's also something that you build up a tolerance to very quickly. Oh. So where uh, it might give you a, almost a psychedelic high at first after. A day or two, it won't do that anymore. Oh, interesting. Yeah, I have some relatives that are battling cancer right now, and I've, I've told them about it, but nobody really seems to buy into it. I was just curious. Um, yeah, you should check out some of the studies out there and, and show them that. Maybe they'll uh, see the light. Yeah. And just hope, you know, that they'll reach for every option to fight uh, such a deadly disease. Okay, well, thanks a lot, guys. You're welcome. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks for your call. I have a couple little show-and-tell items here tonight, or as they say today, sharing. One of them is this Seaberry. Uh, it's the same thing, some of the same things we had on last week, but they were there, and I'll do it again in case you didn't see it last week. This is Seaberry Corn Plasters. It's used to remove warts and things. You put the uh, cannabis uh, on your, your wart and leave it for a day or two, and then it would just scratch right off and come off... Uh, entirely so this is Seabury and Johnson was a predecessor of Johnson and Johnson they uh, be, were bought by Johnson and Johnson then it was Seabury and Johnson before it became Johnson and Johnson so this just gives you this is about 1880-10 next door we have uh, from direct cells of Buffalo New York a cannabis uh, tincture an alcohol extract and uh, this is a big pint bottle of it then we go to non-medicinal use. We have this hemp shirt uh, from Made in Hawaii. It's 55% hemp and 45% cotton, uh, woven with a Chinese fabric and uh, printed and uh, manufactured in Maui, in Paia, where Willie Nelson likes to hang out. Then right next door, we have our hero, number one, Michael Phelps, <laughs> our most famous marijuana bong smoker. And so... Uh, I want to remind you that Michael won eight 
uh, gold medals out of eight tries at the last Olympics, and I think he won like six the time before or something like yeah, that, five six or in six. Athens. So he's a uh, total 14 gold medals, and so uh, you can't say that marijuana slowed Michael Phelps down, and you can't get these boxes anymore. Right. They took them off the shelf so shortly after the... The, the bong incident where he was photographed, what was it, University of South Carolina, yep. smoking a bong. Happened on my birthday. All right. Fact. Best he was birthday celebrating. present I ever got. Yeah, he was <laughs> celebrating for you there. Well, Kellogg's, I believe, suffered too oh, because yeah. they uh, took him off. Yeah, yeah, there's a company called Vano that does ratings of brands based on how popular the brand mm. is, how well liked <laughs> it is, etc. <laughs> they rank 5,600 com companies, and before the Michael Phelps bong incident, Kellogg's was ranked number nine out of 5,600, number nine. After the Michael Phelps incident, they have dropped, as the last time I checked, right before normal conference, they're now down to 304th. <laughs> All <the> right. <laughs> also, their stock price in the six weeks following Michael Phelps bong incident dropped 20% from $45 to $36 a share. Now, in the meantime, Subway didn't drop Michael Phelps, and in fact, started him on a new ad campaign, which I swear to you, is called SubwayFreshBuzz.com. And Subway has only gone up in stock price and popularity. All right. That should explain everything. More good signs. So uh, if you are out there and you are a loved one, have one of these conditions that qualifies for medical marijuana, and you're in one of the states for which medical marijuana is allowed, we have doctors all across the United States who would be happy to help qualified patients get a medical marijuana permit. You can call us. Uh, yeah, the, the conditions include most prominently chronic pain. I would say 60 to 80 percent of the patients with medical marijuana permits have a chronic pain condition. There's nausea conditions, AIDS, cancer, glaucoma, uh, conditions that cause severe muscle spasms like multiple sclerosis or uh, severe uh, seizures like epilepsy. If you have any of those conditions there and gastrointestinal ailments and neurodegenerative diseases, like Parkinson's and Alzheimer's, then uh, give us a call and our doctors will be happy to help you or your f loved one get that medical marijuana permit so they can legally possess, use, and grow medical marijuana. Just call us at 1-800-723-0188. That's 1-800-723-0188. And uh, we'll be happy to help. Simple as that. Yeah. I always have to put that plug in. You know, <laughs> part and parcel. And so uh, we are winding up. I think Bingy and the Seventh Seal should be moving into place. We'll be uh, back with another song with them in a couple more minutes. Uh, anything you'd like to say, Tim? Normally we have you over here on the musical side. That's true. You know, I don't have to talk here. until last. Yeah, but, uh, you know, it's, it's pumpkin season, so it's always fun to be out there. I did get a pumpkin into Jack, so he had one that said Happy Halloween with a pot plant on it. All right. I'm very, very happy about that. Uh, come to the normal meeting tomorrow. Should be a good meeting. That's right. If you are a medical marijuana patient, you should come to that address right there on your screen, 700 Northeast Deacon. Tomorrow, you want to be there about 1130. You don't want to be there afternoon because they lock the doors and you won't be able to get in. So it's a private uh, members-only meeting at that point. And so uh, if you have a Oregon medical marijuana card and picture ID, uh, you can come down and uh, join Normal for a, a nominal fee, and uh, the uh, people such as myself and others bring in free plants that we give away and free medicine. And so those are given away to patients in need at that event. Also, Oregon Normal's Medical Cannabis Awards is coming up. Is it the 12th of December? Uh, it's the first weekend of December, I believe. So, is it the 12th? The 12th of yeah. December. So that's coming up on the. The 12th of December here in Portland, that's a, a medical marijuana judging contest. There's a, uh, a, a seminar that goes on all day that's open to the public, uh, once again for a nominal fee, and then a banquet that night that awards the uh, winners of the uh, Cannabis Cup. The way it works is I think 28 people turn in 28 different strains of cannabis. They're give, the judges are given about a month and a half to judge them in a judge book, and then at the... Uh, Cannabis Awards, they're all tabulated, and the winners are announced. I should so. also let folks know, too, that uh, Danny Danko, the senior cultivation editor yes. from High Times Magazine, will be there doing a grow seminar uh, specifically uh, for people to learn how to grow 
uh, bigger, what he called it, bigger roots, more fruits. Uh, the idea is how to grow under these medical marijuana laws that limit you on a per plant basis, how to get the biggest yield off of those plants. So be really good there at the OMCAs this year. Check that out. Yeah, that is true. So, yeah, it's true. The bigger the roots are the, the, and the, more, uh, the bigger the plant is, the more it's going to produce per plant. So if you're limited in your number of plants, it obviously behooves you to grow your plants bigger and uh, harvest more to, to meet your needs. So that's one of the ways to do it. Well, we're going to go away here, and you're going to watch Bingy and the Seventh Seal. I want to thank you all for watching. Uh, tune in next week and help us restore hemp. Thank you, Bingy. Lyra.